Hi friends, welcome to CodeJana and in this video we are going to take our application one step further. So, in the last video we left our app in this state. We just printed a message, hello universe to all my coding buddies and let's check if it's working still. So I'm going to run our myapp.py file. So Python and then myapp.py file. You can press tab to complete the commands. It's much faster. All right, so server is successfully running. Let's control click on this link. All right, so it's displaying hello universe to all my coding buddies. Let's make it larger. All right, so currently it's working in this state. So let's close our server by control C. All right. So in this video, we are going to take a look at the layout and website structure. Now, if you're creating a big application, a SaaS application, as I said in the introduction video, uh, for a software as a service application, you need so many files and you need a lot of code, all right? And if you create all of that code in a single file and don't follow a structure, then it's going to get very messy and very difficult to manage. So we are going to split our code and split our files into multiple sections. So that's it's easier to maintain. Also, if you're creating everything in this particular myapp.py file, then Flask is not going to understand how to render your pages. Let me show you why that's important. So suppose we are going to create a home page. So in codejourn underscore Flask, let's create home page dot HTML. And in this page, I'm just going to type Home page. Now I'm going to use Zen coding to complete the course because and I'll be explaining how I'm doing it. So for starters just type h1 and press tab. It will fill out rest of the code for you. I'm just going to type home page. All right and uh, save that. If you don't want to manually save it every few seconds after you make the change click on file and then turn on auto save. All right so now you must tell Flask to render that page. How do you do that? With the help of render template function. First of all, we are going to import that render template function. As you can see, as I typed render, Kite has shown me the function itself. So let's click on the first one. And now we are going to make change in our first route. Just beneath the home route, we are going to create another decorator function and call it slash home. What this is going to do is when we open localhost 45000 and then slash home, it is going to render our homepage.html. So now we cannot return a message. We need to return a render template function. So render template and then in parenthesis, you can include some argument that goes along with this function. So, so first one is the name of the template that you want to render, which is going to be the name of our file along with extension. So that would be homepage.html. All right, so how about we try to run our code and see if it renders homepage.html or not. So that's python, myapp.py. And so it's running. So I'm going to just click on it. And see, it is saying Jinja2 exceptions, template not found. Even when the file is sitting right there, it could not find homepage.html. This is what happens when you don't follow a particular layout that Flask is expecting. Don't worry, it's an easy fix. We are just going to create a templates folder and move our homepage.html inside of that. So let's click on new folder, create a templates folder, and then move homepage.html inside templates. All right, you don't need to restart your server again. You can just uh, either open Firefox or Chrome as it is, type localhost, or 5000 and either you can just load it up and as you can see our home page has appeared or if you want to test the new route as well use slash and then home so both of those routes are working and it has also recognized that we want to render this home page top template now that you've seen how important layout is let's discuss website structure as well after that, we are going to dive deeper into Jinja2 codes and how to create your first basic layout of this website. All right, so how's the website structure should be? We want each route in a different file. We want all the forms and important information in their particular file as well. 
So now let's create sections for our application. I'm also going to include a flowchart that details all of this. All right, so let's break this simple application apart because it's easier to break this apart right now and much harder to break it in different sections once we create all of those forms, all of those user logins and different routes and other things. So let's start creating it. First of all, we need a main file that is used to run this application. You can name it anything. I'm just going to call it run.py because it's easier to remember that this is the file that you should run in order to run your server and your application as a whole. Now in this file, you just need the function that runs this application. So that would be this one. So just copy it and paste it in run. After that, as you already know, that we had created this if conditional statement to check for the main file and then access the run method of app variable. So we need this one as well. So you can control X and control V here. So we cut and paste here because we don't need this in myapp.py. All right, now let's create a separate file for our routes. Let's call it routes.py. As I've said earlier that being direct with the names of your files and functions, it is very important because other people may be working on your code as well. So they shouldn't have to guess which file does what and which function does what. All right, so let's copy this entire route from app route and paste it in routes. Now we only have this in our myapp.py. We are actually going to make it an initialization file. So let's rename our file to double underscore init double underscore. All right, so now it's an initialization file and we are going to initialize the class cap and then our routes file from it. We don't need this render template because we are not using this function in this file. So let's delete it. So here's what we did. We imported the Flask class from Flask library. All right, so we have instantiated the Flask class as well. Now let's create a new folder inside code jana underscore Flask. And for simplicity, we are going to name it code jana underscore Flask. All right, so we have created code jana underscore Flask. Now, except for run file and our VENV virtual environment folder, every file should be inside this new code jana underscore Flask folder. So let's move them all right confirm the move after that move the templates folder as well then finally the initialization file here's how it looks we only have one file in code jana underscore flask the main one and inside our new code jana underscore flask folder we have the templates folder the initialization file and the routes.py file Right now, our app is in shambles. It's not going to work, so let's make it work. We are going to initialize this routes.py file by adding this statement from code jana underscore flask, which is this folder. We are going to initialize the routes file by telling flask where it resides. So as you can see, it's going to be in code jana underscore flask folder, and then we can import the routes file. Let's check our run.file. Now here it is saying that app is not defined. Now where is our app variable? Our app variable is inside our init file. So in run.py we're just going to type from code jana underscore flask which is this folder import app. What this is saying that go inside code jana underscore flask and then access any variable that's inside it. It's automatically going to go inside it and look for double underscore in it double underscore file. Since we do have it, it's going to go inside it then check if app variable is available or not. Since it is, it's going to assign this flask class to it and then initialize our app. So now this one is fixed as well. All right, so we only have one file left that is routes.py. So there are all these squiggly lines because we don't have any import statement here. So let's import them one by one. First of all, we don't have an app variable imported. So how can we use the methods in it? 
So let's import that one first from again code jana folder import app. Same thing applies here as well. It's going to go inside code jana, look for this double underscore in it file, and then seek out the app variable. So now that error is gone as well. Now this render template, we don't have it imported. So let's import it as well from flask import render template. All right, so now every single dependency has been imported and our code looks much leaner and it's easier to maintain the code from here. So after doing all those changes, let's try to run our app from run.py file. So let's clear our terminal CLS and then Python run.py. And see there are no errors in our server. Let's click on the link and our home page has appeared again. And that's a relief because sometimes when you make all these changes, it doesn't work. And imagine how difficult it would be if you were to make all of these changes when you are finished with your application. It's really tough. Also, at this point, I'm going to recommend you to plan your application before jumping into it because proper layout and website structure is as important as the coding itself.